everybody, Doreen here. Welcome to another episode of, well, Dream Daddy. Um, how are you guys all doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right. So, we left off because we, we fucked Robert. Fuck! And uh, we just got home from said fucking. Fuck! I'm gonna say fuck, fuck a lot this. Is this already three? This is three. Hey, Amanda, what? Drink this. The prickle juice? The pickle juice? Why would I drink the pickle juice? Yes, it's what I used once. Uh, would assume someone would use. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Yeah, I get it. I'm hungover. You drink. You don't want me to know because I'm your father. I was gonna say daddy, and then I realized this is my daughter, and that'd be gross. We have tarnished the word daddy. We really have nowadays. Although I've never tried it before, and won't try it, obviously. Like, if you were to encounter, like, say, like a... 17 year old why a 17 year old girl would still be calling her dad daddy i don't know but it happens you wouldn't know you'd be like is that guy fucking Fuck. a 17 year old or is that his Fuck. fucking daughter you wouldn't Fuck. fucking know maybe they're just a really close family and she still feels close to her parents i called never mind and what about vice versa what if you assume the girl is his daughter and then you find out no it's some girl he's Fuck. fucking like what the Fuck. man you never know you never know who raised you i raised you amanda and Give her a stir and yet resign side eye. Cause she is helping me get over my hangover. So, you know, I eye her suspiciously. The eye, the jar of pickles, even more suspiciously. Why would she keep it in a jar of pickles? Or does the pickle juice somehow help with the remedy of the hangover cure? Uh, this better work. I down a sip of the tart juice. Let me drink away. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. I mean, I assume. I don't know. I don't know what this alcoholic beverage cure is, but I assume it works and that you need more of it, Dad. Uh, I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk. I am now hungry for some bacon and eggs, son of a bitch. Uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. You know what I always have on when I have a bad hangover? Some carne asada fries or Filipinos. Fuck, man, that is the best hangover cure. I, I know we all have our own hangover cures, but that's mine. Just like, oh man, I want some now. Amanda grabs her backpack. No, I want to get drunk so that tomorrow I can have some carne asada fries. Oh, so good. Uh, Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get going to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega. Okay? He said it was important. Love ya. And now we're gonna meet Daddy Vega, I'm assuming. I'm assuming, I don't know, I'm assuming. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. I forgot I made fucking Bob Ross with fucking senpai eyes. The fuck is wrong with me? I think we're forgetting the fact that we got plowed in the ass for the first time last night when we were drunk. Uh, and he still hasn't addressed this internally with his internal monologue of, hey, did I fuck, fuck. a dude last night? I didn't know I would swung that way. Uh, we do our secret handshake and she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. Still a little hungover. Not a lot hungover. Just, just a wee, a tad hung. <laughs> hung. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch, and am relieved to see that I am only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth, a youth, I see a young lad standing way off in the distance, standing by his metal contraption of holding his locker and approach him for help. Hello, youth. Do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? Edgy teen who probably writes poetry by candlelight and bought his belt from 2006 Hot Topic. I know that's because I once had said belt, that exact fucking belt, uh, and the matching wrist thing. And I'm pretty sure that's 666 tattooed on his uh, arm, but they can only show the 66 for fear of angering the vengeful demon below. Um, he's also wearing some black Livestrong bracelets uh, and has applied a modest amount of Eyeshadow, yet no other makeup. Hmm. Other than his black 
Nails signifying the darkness of the soul. Reminds me of when I was young. The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavy lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Oh, the snarky remark from the teen warranted a slap across his face. Bitch best know his place. Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Ah, uh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. As I walked away, I looked back to watch him do the gothic shuffle from South Park. You would know this if you watched South Park back in, you know, the early 2000s. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth set me on a wild goose chase. Let's not get confused here. He was not very punk just because he wears, you know, dark clothing and has piercings does not necessarily mean he is punk. It just means that he dresses as if he lived in Hot Topic. Circa 2006. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He could very well be a punk, punk kid. I, I, I get that. He probably is. But I don't see any band on that T of his. Which offends me. Because if you're going to to wear the studded belt, you must weareth the band tee as well. Seriously, dude, I have like a hundred band tees in my closet. And I don't wear them anymore because I feel weird walking around in band tees nowadays. Occasionally I'll wear like, uh, like a black flag shirt or one of my many Rise Against shirts. I should get a Blink-182 shirt now that I think about it. This is way off topic. Cut all this out. Cut all of this. I head back to where low rent Gerard. <laughs> I head back to where that low rent Gerard way is standing. Fully ready to give him a piece of my mind. When suddenly a head pops out from the classroom next to his locker. I would have gone with Jared Leto. Just because of the way things have been turning for him lately. But li Loosen. Don't you have a third period to get to? <laughs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Wow, now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. You must be daddy. God, I named him daddy. You must be daddy. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? That's what That's what he said last night. Ha, <laughs> oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might. Get stuck in this. Also what he said last night. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narration in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Very mature of you. Huh. The whole class erupts in laughter. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit your ass down, boy. Now... Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that, ding, 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 all the students immediately get up and make a break for the door as if their fucking Fuck. lives depended on it. Remember to do the reading and answer their response question on page 194 in your textbook. Half of you don't know I said that because you're already at the door. Uh, nobody's listening. Or not, I guess, because daddy's still in the back listening very intently. Mr. Vega turns to me in size, my eyes gazing over that stubble chin, that run Jeremy mustache, that way his man bun just glistens in the light, my newly, my newly awoken butthole clenching at the top. <laughs> I can't. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Yeah, well, you know, they're all the same. Both, you know, budget cuts and all. All right, anyways, so much for coming in. Ha! <laughs> no problem, Mr. Vega. Please, call me Hugo. Hugo Vega. That's actually a badass name, dude. That's a badass fucking name. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student. I'm not concerned about her recent behavior. Uh, what's going on, Hugo? Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but it's strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. 
And that didn't even cross my mind, something might be wrong. Oh, no. I just wanted to ask, is, is everything okay at home? Well, we just moved. But I was only to the other side of town, and Amanda has was way more excited about it than I was. See if you could talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Hey. Anytime, bruh. Why did I say bruh? Who still says bruh? On my way out, I stopped, thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Oh. Yes? They ever catch that rye? Oh. Yes. I, I haven't read Catcher in the Rye, so I have no fucking idea what they're talking about. I leave the class classroom, make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I could talk to her about what's going on. Hmm. I pull up to Carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossip about our celebrity crushes. Ah, so he talked about Mar Mario Batali the whole time. It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. The mall food court. Let's go home and make some dinner. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the food channel. With our powers combined, Captain Planet. Uh, I don't know about that, but I can promise you it will at least be edible. That's the spirit. I'll uh, be driving in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find out that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share. I love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? Nope, never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Frank said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pop. Senioritis and all that. Thought you liked Mr. Vegas' class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I, I, Amanda, she's still texting. Just, I want you to know that she can talk to me about anything. I can tell whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard MR is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Ah, uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you get it. Maybe she has a boyfriend. Okay. Who you texting? Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Interesting. I, I, I hit that on the nose, didn't I? Yep. Do you like Noah? What? No. Dad? Ugh. I can't believe you would. Dad. I mean, geez. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry. Sorry. Just... Just ask him. Dad, he's just my friend, okay? Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Girl. He ain't just your friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. And then I barreled out of the seat in my awkwardness. She leans forward and turns up the radio. Guess that conversation is over. Whew. That got awkward fast. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. When I, I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artisanal? There's two ingredients, mac and cheese, the mac and the cheese. Dad, please, try and enjoy the finer things in life. She calls me dad for short, because my name's daddy. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Plus, it has bacon in it. Aren't we as a society collectively over bacon? No! Society over bacon, what fucking blasphemy is this? Bacon never stopped being good. It just has a PR problem. Does it? I don't think it does. Who's complaining about bacon? No one. We get to work on the recipe. Amanda measuring. Do they still have that bacon fest? 
what was it? There was some place like Albee's type place that had like a bacon fest or something, but they wrapped everything in bacon and served everything with bacon. And they had like bacon pancakes and bacon drinks. And that is America. <laughs> we get to work on the recipe. Amanda measuring things out and handling them, handing them to me to dump in the bowl so I can feel useful. And it puts me on bacon duty. So I chop a bunch and toss it in a pan and get it sizzling. The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor, Pops. Not only are we going to want fullness of the cheese and bacon, but also need to counterbalance it with a crunchy mouth feel of breadcrumbs. So you put the breadcrumbs in your motherfucking mac and cheese. Check on bacon. Bacon's good. How's that breadcrumb taste coming? Uh, it's still pink and rubbery. Give it, a pe give it a little stir. Wait. What's a mouth feel? You know, when you eat stuff and the texture. Listen, I've been watching a lot of Food Channel. Honestly, I don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say I know what it means no no I get that every time I watch that channel I just feel in order hungry jealous and secure about my cooking abilities and hungry again ah. I like the mouthful of that sentence I like the mouthful of Robert's dick uh, oh my god Amanda mouthful isn't just about food it's also about words that are fun to say gregarious boisterous catawumpus is that an actual word discombobulated all of a sudden, the basin bur bacon bursts into flames. I must have not been paying attention to how the pan was. Fire, fire, oh god, fire! I run around the kitchen looking for anything to put out the fire. I grab a cup of water and Amanda snatches it out of my hands. Nope, you don't use water on a grease fire, guy. She puts it down and commonly grabs a lid from the pantry. She places it on top of the flames and turns down the heat. I finally calm down. Did I almost burn your brand new house down because I was too busy saying silly words? Indubitably. One of my favorites. One of my favorite words. Cool. Who wants takeout? Man, I order some Chinese food and eat it on the couch of our new living room. She flips on the TV. Oh, cool. Long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers is hot. <laughs> I love it. Long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers is on. That has to be on the History Channel. Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. <laughs> also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Colin and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. Can't steer them. They're damn ice roads. Well, let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Oh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying, you're going to die. <laughs> That's because we are about to die, you. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Fuck it, love this. I stay a little bit longer, curious about the exploits of Colin and Flint, Dogbone, after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed to get a good night's sleep. We're gonna leave off here. I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter, um, so I can do more of them in throughout the week. Um, so bear with me on this. Uh, thank you guys all once again for watching. Uh, hopefully, we'll have another one tomorrow. If not, next week we'll see how it turns out. I'm still trying to get used to the rhythm of, of having recorded videos and live streams at the same time again. So bear with me while I get while I get used to it. But thank you guys all for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe buttons. Um, other than that, thank you guys all for uh, watching once again. You have a wonderful day. Also, don't forget to check out my live streams every day, 4 p.m. Um, you know, yes. Okay, goodbye. That was an awkward exit. <laughs>